Mont Blanc, lines written in the Vale of Chamonix by Percy Bysshe Shelley. The everlasting universe of things flows through the mind and rolls its rapid waves, now dark, now glittering, now reflecting gloom, now lending splendour where from secret springs the source of human thought its tribute brings of waters with a sound but half its own, such as a feeble brook will oft assume in the wild woods among the mountains lone, where waterfalls around it leap forever, where woods and winds contend and a vast river over its rocks ceaselessly bursts and raves. Thus thou, raven of Arve, deep, dark ravine, thou many-coloured, many-voiced vale, over whose pines and crags and caverns sail fast cloud shadows and sunbeams, awful scene, where power in likeness of the Arve comes down from the ice gulfs that gird his secret throne, bursting through these dark mountains like the flame of lightning through the tempest. Thou dost lie, thy giant brood of pines, around thee clinging, children of elder time, in whose devotion the chainless winds still come and ever came to drink their odours and their mighty swinging, to hear an old and solemn harmony. Thine earthly rainbows stretched across the sweep of the ethereal waterfall, whose veil robes some unsculptured image, the strange sleep which, when the voices of the desert fail, wraps all in its own deep eternity. Thy caverns echoing to the Arve's commotion, a loud, lone sound no other sound can tame. Thou art pervaded with that ceaseless motion, thou art the path of that unresting sound, dizzy ravine. And when I gaze on thee, I seem, as in a trance sublime and strange, to muse on my own separate fantasy, my own, my human mind, which passively now renders and receives fast influencings, holding an unremitting interchange with the clear universe of things around. One legion of wild thoughts whose wandering winds now float above thy darkness and now rest, where that or that thou art no unbidden guest, in the still cave of the witch poesy, seeking among the shadows that pass by, ghosts of all things that are, some shade of thee, some phantom, some faint image, till the breast from which they fled recalls them, thou art there. Some say that gleams of a remoter world visit the soul in sleep, that death is slumber, that its shapes the busy thoughts outnumber of those who wake and live. I look on high. Has some unknown omnipotence unfurled the veil of life and death? Or do I lie in dream, and does the mightier world of sleep spread far around and inaccessibly its circles? For the very spirit fails, driven like a homeless cloud from steep to steep that vanishes among the viewless gales. Far, far above, piercing the infinite sky, Mont Blanc appears, still, snowy and serene. Its subject mountains bear unearthly forms, pile around it ice and rock, broad vales between of frozen floods, unfathomable deeps, blue as the overhanging heaven that spread and wind among the accumulated steeps. The desert, peopled by the storms alone, save when the eagle brings some hunter's bone and the wolf tracks her bear, how hideously its shapes are heaped around, rude, bare and high, ghostly and scarred and riven. Is this the scene where the old earthquake demon taught her young ruin? Were these their toys? Or did a sea of fire envelop once this silent snow? None can reply. All seems eternal now. The wilderness has a mysterious tongue which teaches awful doubt, or faith so mild, so solemn, so serene, that man may be, but for such faith, with nature reconciled. Thou hast a voice, great mountain, to repeal large codes of fraud and woe, not understood by all, but which the wise and great and good interpret, or make felt, or deeply feel. The fields, the lakes, the forests and the streams, ocean and all the living things that dwell within the dadal earth, lightning and rain, earthquake and fiery flood and hurricane, the torpor of the year when feeble dreams visit the hidden buds, or dreamless sleep holds every future leaf and flower, the bound with which from that detested trance they leap, the works and ways of man, their death and birth, and that of him and all that his may be, all things that move and breathe with toil and 
sound are born and die, revolve, subside and swell. Power dwells apart in its tranquility, remote, serene and inaccessible. And this, the naked countenance of earth on which I gaze, even these primeval mountains teach the inverted mind. The glaciers creep like snakes that watch their prey from their far fountains, slow rolling on. There, many a precipice, crossed in the sun in scorn of mortal power, have piled dome, pyramid and pinnacle, a city of death, distinct with many a tower and wall impregnable of beaming ice. Yet not a city, but a flood of ruin is there, that from the boundaries of the sky rolls its perpetual stream. Vast pines are strewing its destined path, or in the mangled soil branchless and shattered stand, the rocks drawn down from yon remotest waste have overthrown the limits of the dead and living world, never to be reclaimed. The dwelling place of insects, beasts and birds becomes its spoil their food and their retreat forever gone. So much of life and joy is lost. The race of man flies far in dread. His work and dwelling vanish like smoke before the tempest stream, and their place is not known. Below, vast caves shine in the rushing torrent's restless gleam, with which, which from those secret chasms in tumult welling meet in the vale, and one majestic river the breath and blood of distant lands forever rolls its loud waters to the ocean waves, breathes its swift vapours to the circling air. Mont Blanc yet gleams on high. The power is there, the still and solemn power of many sights and many sounds and much of life and death. In the calm darkness of the moonless nights, in the lone glare of day, the snows descend upon that mountain. None beholds it there, nor when the flakes burn in the sinking sun, or the star beams dart through them. Winds contend silently there, and heap the snow with breath, rapid and strong, but silently. Its home, the voiceless lightning in these solitudes, keeps innocently, and like vapour broods over the snow strength of things which governs thought and to the infinite dome of heaven is as a law inhabits thee and what were thou and earth and stars and sea if to the human mind's imaginings silence and solitude were vacancy